Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So in this video, we'll talk about standard penetration test. So this test is an in-situ test, uh, which is most frequently used to measure the shear strength of the soil at site. It is more useful for cohesionless soils. This test is also used to determine the soil properties and to obtain the soil samples from boreholes at desired depths. So SPT is conducted in a borehole using a standard equipment consisting of a standard weight that is 63.5 kg, a split spoon sampler which is used to extract the soil samples from the soil uh, at a desired depth. Then a mechanism for lifting and dropping the standard weight and a set of connecting rods to reach the desired depth. Now, uh, in this figure, you can see the schematic diagram of the standard penetration test. And here you can see the uh, tripod stand with a pulley to uh, pull the weight and to drop it free fall from a certain height. So this is a hammer, a donor type hammer, which is having the weight of 63.5 kg. Then uh, here is the guide rod, which guides the hammer to drop from a certain height. And the anvil uh, over which the this uh, hammer is dropped. Then the force of this hammer is transferred through this drilling rod to the soil now uh, another uh, equipment is split spoon sampler as i earlier mentioned that split spoon sampler is used to ext extract the soil sample from a borehole at a desired depth Here you can see the schematic diagram of the split spoon sampler. Now, here you can see that uh, when a force is applied through the donor type hammer, and then this force is transferred to the soil through the drill rods, then a penetration in the soil is uh, happened. So it is mentioned that the penetration of a uh, first six inch is not considered, then the penetration or SPTN values against next 12 inch are recorded and which are known as SPT resistance values. So in a procedure, firstly, the borehill is drilled to the desired depth then the drilling tools are removed and the sampler is lowered to the bottom of the hole. The sampler is driven into the soil by a drop hammer weighing 63.5 kg mass falling through a height of 30 inch. The sampler is driven by 18 inch and the number of hammer blows required to drive each 6 inches are recorded. The number of blows recorded for the first six inches are disregarded, whereas the number of blows recorded for the last 12 inches or 150 mm intervals are added to give the standard penetration number N. Then, there are certain factors that influences the SPTN values. Number one, variations in the test apparatus and procedures can influence the SPTN values. Then disturbance created by the borehole can, on, can also influence the SPTN values. Then the soil type and properties into which the sampler is driven also influences the SPTN values. Then the effective stress level also affect the SPTN values. So in order to cater all these errors, we need to apply the corrections for these influences. 
to compensate these errors we apply certain number of corrections which are described over there here you can see the corrected n value can be found out using this correlation n160 is equals to n field ce multiply by cn multiply by c b multiply by cs or n multiply by cr now n160 is basically the corrected n value against 60% energy correction then the n field is the n value recorded in the field c sub e is the correction for hammer energy then c sub n is the correction for overburden then c sub b is the correction for borehole size c sub s is the correction for sampler used whether it is smooth or lined then cr is the correction for raw length since all these factors influences the sptn values therefore the corrections corresponding to these factors are applied here you can see correction for the hammer energy so this table shows the correction values against different types of hammer used in different regions of the world if you can see here in argentina for donut type hammer typically energy ratio is applied as 45% and similarly for other uh, hammer types in different regions there are different energy corrections which are applied in different regions of the world now the corrected n value n160 is n field into ce multiplied by cn multiplied by cvcs and cr where cn is the correction for overburden which can be found out using this formula here you can see c sub n is equals to pa atmospheric pressure divided by overburden stress whole power 0.5 and it should be less than or equal to 1.7 to 2 overburden stress can be found out by multiplying unit weight into the height similarly the borehole correction can be applied if the borehole size is between 2.5 to 4.5 inch then a correction of 1 is applied it means uh, there is no correction required if the borehole size is between is in between 2.5 to 4.5 inch if the borehole size is up to 6 inch from 4.5 inch to 6 inch then a correction of 1.05 is applied because if the borehole size is greater than 4.5 inch then the sptn value recorded is actually less than the actual value therefore we need to apply a correction factor that will increase the n value in order to reach the actual value of n then if the borehole size is up to 18 then a further increment or you can say 1.15 correction factor is applied in order to obtain the actual or corrected n value then a correction for sampler used if a smooth sampler is used then there is no correction required or you need to simply multiply all the factors with one if the sampler used is without liner then you need to apply the correction of 1.1 to 1.3 because if you are using a sampler without the liner then the then the recorded sptn value will be less than the actual n value so you need to apply a correction that will increase the sptn value to the extent when it will reach to the real sptn value or actual sptn value similarly you can apply the correction for rod length if the rod length is in between 30 to 100 feet then actually there is no correction required against uh, rod length then if the rod length is in between 20 to 30 feet then correction is applied as 0.95 and similarly for other rod length sizes these corrections can be applied 
So by applying all these correction, you can find out the corrected n value. Now, in this table, uh, it is discussed in detail that variation in n values due to the operator and procedure, that how the value of n can be influenced by multiple uh, factors Then uh, in this table, you can see the correlation between n value and soil properties. If n value is in between 0 to 4, and then the relative density of soil can be classified as very loose type of soil, and the angle of friction can be taken as less than 28 degree. And if the n value is, between, is in between 4 to 10, then it can be classified as loose type of soil and the angle of internal friction can be taken in between this range 28 to 30 degree. Then if the n value is in between 10 to 30 and then a soil is classified as medium dense and the angle of internal friction will be in between this range 30 to 36 degree. And if the n value is in between 30 to 50 then the soil type is classified as dense and the angle can be taken between this range. And if the n value is greater than 50, then a soil type is classified as very dense soil and the angle of internal friction can be taken as greater than 41 degree. Now, the consistency uh, of the soil can also be explained with respect to n value and the, uh, and the unconfined compressive strength of the soil as well with respect to the SPTN value. If the SPTN value is very is less than 2, then a soil consistency is classified as very soft and unconfined compressive strength will be less than 25 kPa. And for a soft soil type, uh, the SPTN value will be in between 2 to 4 and the unconfined compressive strength will be in between 25 to 50. And similarly for medium stiff soils, SPTN value uh, will be in between 4 to 8 and QU will be in between 50 to 100 and so on. Then uh, there are certain correlations between the angle of friction and the normalized SPTN values for coarse grain and fine grain soil. You can use this chart in order to find out the uh, frictional angle against the SPTN value for fine grain and coarse grain soil as well. Then our relative density chart, you can see here the details. Similarly, there is a correlation between the particle diameter and uh, corrected n value and relative density ratio. Similarly, relative density chart with respect to normalized resistance. Another correlation between ratio of under in shear strength to P0 and SPTN values for various type of soil. Then again value of N60 against the constrained modulus. You can also find out the constrained modulus uh, corresponding to the SPTN values. Then the drain modulus can also be found out using these correlations. And then the shear modulus can also be found out using the SPTN values and this standard chart. Now, uh, another use of SPTN value is to find out the settlement in the soil. As you can see here, one of the correlation of uh, kind of one of the correlation presented by Terzaghi to find out the settlement using SPTN values, and the correlation is S sub C is equal to Z. 1 multiplied by mv into q where s is settlement at the end of construction and application of light load according to berlin and burbage method z1 can be found out using this correlation z1 is equals to b raised to power 0.75 b is the width of the foundation and z1 is the depth of the influence mv is the average coefficient of vertical compression within this depth of influence and it can be found out 
using this correlation that is equals to 1.7 divided by n60 raised to power 1.4 as z1 is equal to b raised to power 0.75 then the settlement correlation can be found out using this correlation so this is how we can use uh, the standard uh, penetration test to find out the settlement of the soil in the coming videos we will get to know that how standard penetration test can be used to find out the bearing capacity of the soils for shallow foundations and for the deep foundations as well there are many other numerous applications of SPTN uh, SPT test so uh, in this video uh, for the next video we'll be discussing the applications of SPTN SPT test uh, with respect to the soil investigation so i hope you like the video if you like the video don't forget to subscribe and share